A surprise winner on the PGA Tour, Taylor Hendrick ends up winning his first PGA Tour win. He was pretty darn lucky to win. Ben Coles should have won that tournament. Also seeking his first PGA Tour victory, he went into the 18th hole, the easiest hole on the golf course, with a one-shot lead, and he was there in two, just less than 30 feet from the cup. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. Do Leafs fans stop watching hockey now, or do they, do they root for other Canadian teams, Cam? No, I'm not a proponent of that, and it's actually kind of bothered me that, like, all the people in Toronto are kind of like, oh, now I'm going to cheer for the Oilers. Like, why? What do you have? What was your affiliation with the Oilers? Like, Canucks still exist. Like, I don't lose automatically and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to cheer for the Ottawa Senators because of the Canadian. No, I cheer for my bets. The Bostonian versus the book. A lot of books and outside of the New York area, the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking. I see a minus 115 Canes, Rangers minus 105. I like the six and seven games prop like I, like I took with Boston, Toronto, which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's going to be a long, tough, close series. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Cam Rising stuff last year with Utah? Three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? Ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff, and, and it, we really are. When people say we're in, like, the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. Because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions only on Sports Group. Welcome to hour number three, live right here on this Wednesday on the early line on Sports Grid. He is Donnie Wright Side. I am Ben Stevens. I say, there he is Donnie Wright Side. I am Ben mm-hmm. Stevens. It's our third and final hour, live right here on TEL. What a jam packed show we have had today, DRS. Going NBA playoff conversations, WNBA mm-hmm. season begins around Major League Baseball, hockey talk in the Stanley Cup postseason. And in this third hour, it doesn't stop. Not only the themes, topics, and storylines, but the amount of guests that we have had on Karina Mustafa, into Joe Maddon, yeah. into Mark Zeno. Craig Mish joins us up next. Charlie Hulme will join us live from Louisville. We hope in this third hour on the eve of the second major championship this year in golf, the 2024 PGA Championship. What a Wednesday program for the people here on the early line. I mean, it's amazing. It wonders why we need any other host or any other shows on the network altogether. We go coast to coast with our sports here. You take a look at betting above Whoa. the rim. We bet basketball all day long here. Major League Baseball, we got you covered. Fantasy sports, absolutely. So why don't we do this? We have the show on from 8 to 11 Eastern. Let's just run that in three-hour yeah. chunks 24-7, bang, bang, and we'll watch bang. the ratings go through the roof. We'll drop payroll here. It's a win for everybody, including me you, Ben, right? There you go. That's we the pro- we, that's the progress we the update future. the news that – yeah, 100%. We update the news and the storylines around the world of sports that you need to know. Yes. Newswire, check. Craig Mish comes on the show. We're going to talk games. We're going to make some timely decisions. GTD, check. Mm-hmm. We just fixed the Sports Grid Network. It's Donnie right side of exactly. Ben Stevens. 24 hours a day, each and every day. Uh, good point. Well, no, sometimes like if Donnie calls. gets me upset enough, I get mad. I can rage yeah. about sports. Boom. Check. All right. Seems like we're doing pretty good. Put it with the golf, Carver and Lisi. See ya. We're all here. We know everything yeah. here on the early line. We might not drop any f bombs like they do on the money line, but that's a different conversation for a we different will. day. So Multiple in this third, <laughs> all right, good. Wow, <laughs> bomb. Anyway, as we keep going and stop with our inside jokes, we'll focus on the mm. things that we have on the slate on this Wednesday. Another doubleheader of NBA playoff action. DRS, we were talking about this yesterday with our producer, Joe Frizo. I think we're coming to the close 
of consistent doubleheaders on a night-in, night-out basis in the NBA playoffs. By the time we reach the conference finals, it's the alternating scope of one game per night. But tomorrow night, it's game six in Minneapolis. Because of the Fever's home opener in Indianapolis, we don't get game six in Indiana between the Pacers and the Knicks until Friday night. So we must Mm -hmm. relish in these doubleheaders as we have them. And that's the theme for what we had to ask you in Fade the Public. Maybe the last time we could have four answers at SportsGrid on Twitter in a Fade the Public poll. What is the best bet for tonight's NBA playoff games? Plural, two, a doubleheader. It starts in Boston. Game number five, the Celtics one win away from their third consecutive berth in the Eastern Conference Finals. And Boston booked as a 14-and-a-half point favorite. When the Fade the Public poll was posted, it was a 15-point number. Or the more competitive nightcap of the two that we expect in OKC between the Thunder and the Mavericks. In DRS, not many people back in Boston laying 15, which is interesting. It's really a three-way split between the Cavaliers, the Thunder, and the Mavericks, there's that fade the public poll. Yeah, and where the schedule release of the NFL is coming up today, isn't it nice that the Celtics are favored by more than two touchdowns over their opponent, the Cleveland Cavaliers, which leads us to believe maybe Donovan Mitchell not showing up for that game. But I do agree that we are getting three teams being voted on right now. Ben, if we remove the Celtics at around 16%, the Cavaliers, 29%, the Thunder, 28%, the Mavericks, roughly 27%. And that's the way it should be because we're taking a look and saying, Nobody wants to lay 15 points in any professional atmosphere at yeah. this point, even though the Celtics can possibly win by that. Well, nobody wins by 15 or more in the playoffs. Yeah, did you just take a look at that Knicks series the past two nights here? 30-point victories by each team. Blowouts do happen in the playoffs, but nobody really is comfortable with laying that much. I actually went with the Thunder at minus four and a half because I do think yeah. that they can take care of business on their home court, should be able to win that basketball game. And in theory, again, if you're betting them to win the game, they're probably going to win it by five or more points. That's the way I bet. But I can't fault you for just saying, I'll take the 15 points with the Cavaliers, who were basically double-digit underdogs on their home court without Donovan Mitchell and still were able to cover that yeah. basketball game. And I can see you taking the Mavericks. Hey, close, hard-fought series. It's within five points. You think they can win, you'll go that route. So I think it's a pretty even poll for a good margin with the Cavaliers, Thunder, and Mavericks, leaving out the Celtics. So I bet – or I – uh voted for Oklahoma City in the fade the public poll as well with that same idea I expect the Thunder to win Mm -hmm. tonight the margin is relatively short less than five points if I expect Oklahoma City to win even in a competitive game more than likely the Thunder cover that number sure we saw Cleveland cover as a 12 point dog in game number four at home against Boston but that was a much larger margin there's game five tonight in Oklahoma City between the Thunder and the Mavericks again a four and a half point spread eight playoff games now for this young OKC score in this postseason run six victories out of those eight games they have covered in all six wins they were booked as a favorite in all four against New Orleans excuse me they actually didn't cover in game number one five of the six wins so far for OKC but they have covered in their last five easily covering in game one with the 22 point victory against Dallas sure the last time in OKC The Thunder did not win, so thus they did not cover as the favorite, but they won outright as a slight underdog in game number four. I expect Oklahoma City to win in game number five to take a 3-2 series lead and cover that four-and-a-half-point spread, as does our guy Davis Maddock, by the way, a native of the state of Oklahoma. Yeah, he's a big fan of OKC at this point. Now, if you take a look at the two spreads today, certainly on the move, we now see 14 and a half here out in the marketplace at FanDuel for the Boston game, and also four points even now as OKC is a favorite in that market. We'll see where those two end up, but it's a case of the Cavaliers and the Celtics game. We already think that series is over. It's just a matter of who's showing up here and how much pride the Cavaliers had. And also, are you bringing back Donovan Mitchell after sitting him last game with a calf injury to say, 
hey, kid, get out there in a the series. We won't win. And if your calf explodes, you won't even have an off season to get ready for next season. And we'll see you next year, hopefully sometime around November. Maybe you're not going to do that in that aspect. But then again, the Mavericks Thunder, what a pivotal game, man. You win this. It feels like if you win this game, you're probably going to win this series. So there's a lot at right. stake there. And I'm hoping for OKC gets that victory so they can sort of continue that march and make it into at least the Western Conference finals here. But that Celtics Cavaliers game, not a lot to love about that one. That's for sure. DRS, is it fair to say that Oklahoma City is your Western Conference team? Yeah, you know, it's. I guess you could say, like, which team? Because I've, I've said a lot about OKC, so therefore it should be my yep. team. I do like the Minnesota Timberwolves a lot, but I feel like on a night-to-night basis, I'm screaming at the people at home, you better be taking OKC as opposed to doing that with the right. Timberwolves. So put some respect on their name with another right. victory tonight. There you go. You carry the flag for the Thunder, no doubt. Oh. OKC, a minus 148 series outright favorite entering game five in a series tied at two games all tonight in Oklahoma City. And I will just say this about Boston. Game four in Cleveland was a game that defied a lot of trends between the Cavaliers and the Celtics really throughout this postseason. Cleveland has been an underdog seven times now. They're just two and five against the spread. And only game four was the time they covered and did not win. They won outright in game number two. It was also the first playoff victory for Boston so far in this postseason in their seven wins where they did not win by at least 13 points and cover as a lofty favorite. So again, most of what Boston has done throughout this postseason run, six of their seven wins, they have covered and they have been booked as at least a seven and a half point favorite in all seven of those mm-hmm. games. So if Boston wins and makes a statement in game five to close this series, there's still a chance they could cover even as a hefty 14 and a yeah. half point favorite. Craig Mish joins us next live right here on the early line. Denver Nuggets and say, whoa, just a week ago, they were that minus 115 or so price. Now we're looking at them at a 7 to 1 price. Any chances the Nuggets can actually come back? That could be scoring six or seven games, so I think that could be a little bit of a tighter spread between those two. But when you got those two guys, those two monsters, and, and Towns and, and Edwards, it's just really hard. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Miss call the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or a, a you know a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that was wasn't called or vice versa. Give me a 48 minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. Of let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Daily Basis 
Sports. Live right here on this Wednesday on the early line on Sports Grid. That means one thing. Our MLB insider and the host of Newswire that starts at 11 a.m. Eastern time each and every day. Also the daily basis. That is Craig Mish. Joins us live right here on TEL. A full Wednesday slate around your Major League Baseball card, Craig. So we'll break it all down here in this segment. Yeah, and I think it's really noteworthy that the season is kind of in so many different shifts and iterations. Remember, in the early part of the season, the Rockies couldn't win the game. They won six games in a row. The A's couldn't lose. All of a sudden, they are 500. They lost a lot of games recently, too. So it just goes to show you that there's a reason why they set Memorial Day kind of as the barometer as to where you're at. It is certainly fair, and we're coming up on that date soon. Yeah. Yeah, we certainly are. Next weekend. MDW, Memorial Day weekend, Donnie's favorite holiday weekend of the entire mm. calendar year. Why? We go first Why is it his favorite? Min- it's a day off. Donnie? <laughs> you share it with it's, a day it's a day off. off. And also, what a rousing you know, like, answer from Donnie. What a great answer. in the afternoon, which, which doesn't show up all that much on radio. Kevin Walsh loves hot dogs, so he eats a ton of hot dogs on Memorial Day. So it's a great American holiday. Great. Love it. Can't wait. For yeah, it. I was I was great waiting American. for, like, I get to travel here or, you know, I got a family thing there. But he just gave the emphatic avoid day people. off. Yeah, we avoid people on holidays, Craig, in this household. So I understand. I understand. I understand. See, Craig, all right. that's what he does. He's, he's going to smoke a cigar on his back porch. He's going to have a it's lovely true. day. That is what Donnie Wrightside does. And when he has a day off to do it, he's really bought in. We start, Craig, our daily assessment here around Major League Baseball in Minneapolis between the Twins and the Yankees. The Yanks take game number one yesterday, 5-1 to one in this set against Minnesota. It is game number two back in the Twin Cities today. Pablo Lopez on the bump for the Twins. They are booked as a home favorite, minus 130. Will the Twins fall the odds and bounce back to get a victory in this series against New York today. Yeah, look, I mean, another good matchup. I think the Yankees, uh, look, they have dominated the Twins through the years. And, you know, yesterday on the show, I, I said that I thought Chris Paddock could go over his strikeout total. I mean, unfortunately, Friezo bet $20,000 on it. I'm sorry about that. You know, I mean, there's nothing I can do. It's just, it's, just, it's just one prop, you know, it's one prop. Next time, check in with Otani's interpreter if you want to get a bigger limit. But naturally oh. today, I think, I mm. think, Today, I, I think I'm going right back to it today. I mean, Pablo Lopez, 10 strikeouts, 8 strikeouts, 8 strikeouts, last three starts. I know the Yankees are a different animal. I get it. Uh, but I do think that I'm going to try again today. It was only by a half yesterday with Paddock. I, I think Pablo True. Lopez goes over a strikeout total. Again, I'm looking at a game that's a coin flip. It's a minus 115, minus 120. I can tell you that I think the Twins are going to win because potentially they have the better pitcher on the mound. But as we know, it's baseball, and, you know, guys just do not go deep into games generally. And so it's down to the bullpens, and then in a one-run game, anything can happen. So we'll go back to the strikeout uh, prop today with Pablo. Toronto won game number one of the series versus Baltimore. Rain out yesterday, and a pitching change today in a 12-35 start in the Charm City. Bradish is going to be on the mound, who's been very good in his limited innings this year. But instead of Bassett getting the start, you say Kikuchi, the left-handed pitcher, will get the start. He's had a pretty decent 2024 season. Minus 126 are the current updated numbers in a total of 7.5. Afternoon action at Camden Yards, Craig. Any ideas here? Yeah, maybe a little bit of a lean toward an under. I see seven and a half mm-hmm. here. Usually the yeah. afternoon games for, for teams that generally have the higher totals, which Baltimore is involved in, maybe not so much Toronto, is they just play those games differently. They'll never admit it, but they're out, they're up there swinging. Everyone knows that it's the last game of a series or a day game, and so it's on the road traveling somewhere else, maybe for both teams in the spot. I haven't looked at the future schedule. So a decent pitching matchup here. I would lean a little toward an under of seven and a half, but not one of my favorites today. You still see the American League East odds with the Yanks actually now in front, a half game in front of Baltimore, New York, a minus 175. Favorite Baltimore, second best price at plus 170. A large drop off to Toronto at 18 to 1. Craig, we asked you about this division yesterday. It still remains that two team race as of this moment. Now we go out to the desert and a duel today, some afternoon baseball in Arizona. Brandon fought on the bump for the D backs, the reigning National League pennant winners who haven't really been able so far Craig to replicate that success Mm -hmm. of a season ago three games under 500 in the Reds the up-and-coming team last year in the central he should hasn't been pretty as of late they've dropped eight of their last 10 who starts to right the ship today out in Phoenix 
Yeah, it's really, I think Arizona is the play at minus 140. It's a lot of juice. So, you know, I tend to, if I'm going to play this at this level, it may be minus a run and a half. There's a couple of different props I saw that I see out there today. Ellie De La Cruz with total bases is potentially something to look at. And again, doesn't have to happen in the first five innings. You get to Arizona's bullpen thus far, not as good as it was last year. For the Diamondbacks, uh, Ben, it, the recipe is you go into the winter, you sign Eduardo Rodriguez, and you have Corbin Carroll, and you think, wow, this is a team that's going to repeat or get back there this year. And as they say, these best plans don't always go the way that they thought. But look, the Diamondbacks at this yeah. time last year were not thought to be a contender to get to the World Series. I don't even think that they were in August or September. So you give them some time. Reds have been a disappointment. There are, there are going to have to be some changes with the Reds if they fall flat at the end of this season, finishing 8, 10 games under 500. That's not going to be an acceptable season for them. Hot start early for the Pittsburgh Pirates. See if they can get back that magic of the first couple weeks going to take on Milwaukee today. It's going to be Perez the lefty versus the big gas pump out there in Robert Gasser. 20 batters that he's faced. How about this, Craig? Zero ISO, zero weighted on base percentage. We got to love the big gas pump out here as a favorite Milwaukee, no? Yeah, I mean, he loves Memorial Day, too. So, I mean, the schedule is yeah, you know, favorable in. for him we're to in. not see any family yes, and just be home. You know, maybe Gasser won't even be with the team on Memorial Day, Don. He doesn't want to be around his teammates. He just wants to smoke a cigar. Right. Got to play like a guy, guy like that today, right? Gasser. I would think. He's look, Heavy he looked good in his first start. He looked good in his first start. Listen, Brewers, yeah. are, better. Brewers are better. I, I, I really hope. I don't know how things are going to go in Milwaukee in the next 10 days to get us to Memorial Day or so. But if mm-hmm. Robert Gasser is getting the start yeah. for the Brew Crew on Memorial Day in a full MLB slate, we are putting in a huge bet. A Joe Frizo 20K bet on 20K. Robert Gasser yep. and the Brewers. Crypto play. Gu- guaranteed. Each of us. Everybody shake on it now. Yep. Shake on it. Yep. Shake on it. Robert which, Gasser. Which hand do I I'm going to go the opposite way. way. I'm going to try to get you here. Are you over here? Are you over here? Donnie, who are you shaking? <laughs> Where are you? Uh, who are you shaking? Uh, good times. Robert Gasser, the big gas pump for Milwaukee today for MLB Talk Next. <laughs> Denver Nuggets and say, whoa, just a week ago, they were that minus 115 or so price. Now we're looking at them at a 7 to 1 price. Any chances the Nuggets can actually come back? That could be showing six or seven games, so I think that could be a little bit of a tighter spread between those two. But when you got those two guys, those two monsters, and, and Towns and, and Edwards, it's just really hard. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Every missed call, the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or, a, a, you know, a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that wasn't called or vice versa, give me a 48-minute report. And people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports rage late sort of night. Has let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on sports grid.
Just to update a few things here with a new mm-hmm. guy that has been added to the early line MLB roster of our favorites around the bigs, the big gas mm-hmm. pump, Robert Gasser, who was sensational in his first start of the year on Friday against the Cardinals, six innings of shutout work, only allowing two hits. We said that on Memorial Day, if Robert Gasser gets the start for Milwaukee, it's a 20K bet here on the early line. Mm. He starts yeah. today. For the Brew Crew against the Pirates, he is slated to start on Tuesday next week against Miami. If there are no scratches and things follow a regular schedule, we think Robert Gasser starts on Memorial Day, Monday, May 27th against the Chicago Cubs. It's a crypto platinum play, as Joe Lisi would say. Yeah, the big gas pump, man. You got to get him. Got to get him while he's yeah. hot at this point. You can make that first trip around awesome. the National League. See if he can be filthy and dominant. And maybe he can be an adopted son of this program, just like we brought over Vinny P. Sure. We could have a whole family here. We have a whole family. We're going to have a whole family. Vinny Pasquantino, mm-hmm. the Pasquatch Vinny yep. P. We've got our guy, Lucas Gill, not to be confused with yep. Louise Heal, the starter for the Yanks. And now maybe... Mm-hmm. Robert Gasser, depending on if we get that Memorial Day start in just about a week and a half. All right, back to the Daily Diamond Dash here on this Wednesday on the early line, the California Rivals, the California Contest up in Northern California. So far, the Dodgers have been dominant to start this opening midweek series. Yesterday, a 10-2 victory over the Giants in San Francisco. L.A. on the road once again today over the Gigantes. Logan Webb on the bump, though. L.A. remains... A slight road favorite, minus 136. Has the starter for the Dodgers been named? I see, I'm see. i seeing uh, Ryan Yarborough listed here on a couple outlets going up mm. against Logan Webb today. So that's what we're looking at. So not a dominant starter at this point, but the handicap no. should be pretty simple as well. Most people are going to look at the Dodgers and be like, ooh, that's a cheap price to take. But if we are in yeah. Arkansas, Ben, what do they do? What do they do at Arkansas? They call them hogs. He said, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't fit this game. No, because we're going to call them dogs today, baby. That's the San Francisco Giants <laughs> on that dog price today. We're, we're just like, come on, was that a perfect segue? All them hogs, call them dogs. Dog play today, baby. Come on now. Come on. I mean, you take a look at the pitching matchup. Logan Webb is absolutely sensational on the mound this year. 225 oh. batters. Call them dogs out here, baby. Let's go. Whoa. There you go. Big Giants. That's how you finish up the call to the dogs today in San Francisco. Listen, I did not expect. I truly did not expect that to be where you go. The finale of this series, the Dodgers looking for the sweep over San Francisco. L.A. returns home to host the Cincinnati Reds in a four-game weekend set following this game against San Francisco that Donnie believes will go the way of the Mm -hmm. Giants. That was really good. You know, sometimes you build something up, Donnie. You start to allude to something and lead into something, and I have no idea where you're going, like Robert Gasser, the big gas pump, and then a call to the Hogs for Arkansas. I was like, "What what is going on here? What is he doing to call them dogs today between the Giants and the Dodgers? Sensational. Really proud of you. Great to work alongside. Mm -hmm. A day Mm -hmm. baseball game this afternoon out in the Pacific Northwest between the Mariners and the Royals. The M's a favorite, minus 146, as they were yesterday. KC won outright as a dog. Total today, just seven and a half. Now, also, we can have some fun with this as well. This is right off the top of my head. I mean, I should be, you know, a comedian at this point. You take a look at the (laughs) pitcher on the mound here for the Mariners, right? Rick Rick Flair's son out here. Why, Brian? Woo! Is on the mound today, so I had to get that one out of the way. But at the same time, if you're locking this one up, Look at this season, Ben. He's only faced 15 batters, so you can't really go off of that. But let's go back to last year. 178 left-handed batters he's faced. He's a right-handed pitcher, 258 ISO, weighted on base percentage 403. So I ask you right now, Ben, are there any left-handed batters in that lineup that you might be looking towards today for those Kansas City Royals that have been absolutely dominating against right-handed pitching? That's our guy, Vinny P, a 209 ISO power number and a 357 Ah. weighted on base percentage. Now, granted, we're hoping Wu from last year translates to this year from the left-hand side. And if he does, Vinny P should be one of those guys that you should have on your card today for an RBI. I'm not sure if I will because I like to look at this year's statistics. But based on last year, right. he's got a legitimate chance to do some damage today. 
I mean, with all this conversation about our TEL MLB guys, I feel like Vinny P yeah. is a must bet to record a ribby to today in that game yeah. in Seattle. Our final game that we had to break down, but we had too much fun with the jokes. Tanner yeah. Houck has been sensational. Under. For Boston under. this year, the Red Sox minus 134. DRS likes the under of that total of eight between the Rays and the Sox. I don't even know what's coming next. We've had so much fun. Oh, Neither PGA Championship preview. That oh. comes your way next from Louisville here on the early line. Denver Nuggets and say, whoa, just a week ago, they were that minus 115 or so price. Now we're looking at them at a 7 to 1 price. Any chances the Nuggets can actually come back? That could be still in six or seven games, so I think that could be a little bit of a tighter spread between those two. But when you've got those two guys, those two monsters, and, and Towns and, and Edwards, it's just really hard. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Miss call the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or a, a you know a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul should be called that what wasn't called or vice versa. Give me a 48 minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports rage this late sort night. Of has let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. We are on the eve of the second major championship in this year in the world of golf. To Louisville, Kentucky we go, live on the site of Valhalla Golf Club for a second consecutive day. But this time around on the early line, it's Charlie Hulm joining us here on this Wednesday, live from the 10th tee inside the T-Mobile Club Magenta, the presenting sponsor this week for The Smiley Show, of which Charlie is a co-host and a producer, of course, alongside his guy, our guy, Smiley Kaufman. All live round recaps from this week's 2024 PGA Championship at T-Mobile's Club Magenta. And Charlie, you're looking good bright and early on this Wednesday morning. Thanks. Yeah, it's great to be here with with both of you all, Ben and Donnie. Uh, I, I was we were lamenting this in the break. I, there was some tee shots here on the tenth, John Rahm among others, and I was really excited to get my Smiley Kaufman golf announcer voice on and just go really low. And okay, here's the the balls in the air. But uh, you know, we're, yeah. we're we're here now. We maybe we'll get the chance to call a few more shots. It it is looking great right. out here. We thought there was going to be rain. The weather's fantastic. So I'm fired up for a big major week here at Valhalla. Charlie, you are truly on site. Listen, we've got about eight, nine more minutes left in this segment. Hopefully we have some golfers in their practice round that we can get that on-course reporting voice live here on the early (laughs) line. So let's look at where things stand, Charlie, from the odds perspective leading into this second major championship. And it should be no surprise to see Scotty Scheffler on top of this odds board and more than likely on top of the leaderboard in these next few days in Louisville. Four to one price on Scotty. Let's start there. 
how does anybody get in front of Scotty Scheffler this week with his recent form entering the second major championship? So this is such an interesting one because I could not possibly be more excited for the way this tournament is setting up with the top of that that odds board there. You have two guys, you have the number one and the number two players in the world and Scotty Scheffler and Rory McIlroy who have both won in their last two starts. And Scotty's price was actually a little bit shorter heading into the week. He was, he was around plus 350, but he's had that layoff, of course, for the last three weeks for the birth of his son. Um, and so this is the first tournament back. And I guess maybe odds makers are a little unsure as to what sort of form he's going to be in. I mean, I think the, the, the interesting thing about the course setup this week is that in contrary to the Masters, where there was a ton of wind and the conditions were tough, and that maybe kind of forced some mistakes and ruled guys out. I think the conditions here are going to be very good for scoring. And I think that brings more players into play. So whereas Scotty might have a better chance to separate himself from the rest of the field at a tougher venue, I'm not saying Valhalla isn't tough. I just think with the rain, it's going to be a soft course. It, you know, anyone who hits the ball a long way and can have like top tier iron play should have a good chance out here. There's not a ton of undulation in the greens. So for th that's why I'd say I still like Scotty. I think it's tough to not bet on him. But I, I think maybe with, with a, a lack of value there and other guys that are in play, I'd maybe look to, to you know, put some different sort of wagers in play um, this week rather than mm. like an outright on Scotty or maybe even anyone else. If we do take a look at Scotty Scheffler, and rightfully so, I mean, just in a major tournament, a major favorite here. But obviously, as we know, golfers very strict usually on their game plans, how they work out, how they get to the golf course, plenty of time to get ready. Now, we saw him take a couple weeks off. He's back in a major tournament. Do we expect things right out of the gate? Or is this one thing that you approach and say, let's see how Scotty does in round number one and then see if we have those advantages on Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Yeah, you know, it, it's that's a great question because I think the thing that Scotty is is maybe the best ball striker we've seen since prime Tiger Woods, right? So I think the question mark, again, is going to go back to the putter. You know, that's a feel thing, right? And that's the thing that was plaguing Scotty prior to his switch to the spider putter that he won everything with, you know, in, in the, the, the month and a half until he took the break for the birth yeah. of his son. So I'd say that, you know, if, if the putter, if, if it looks like there's a little rust on it round one, maybe cool off on, on, you know, his prospects, but if he comes out of the gate and he's making, you know, everything he looks at like, like he has been, yeah, it's gonna, he's going to be hard to beat. So, Charlie, we'll get to Rory McIlroy in just a moment and the numerous headlines and storylines that follow Rory this week to Valhalla. But when you see two guys at plus 750 or shorter and everybody else at a 14 to 1 price, nearly double the two front runners, it does provide those value that you might not even have necessarily on long shots, but just some names to monitor throughout this week. So, you mentioned it might be a little bit more difficult for the likes of Scotty Scheffler or Rory McIlroy to pull the weight this week at Valhalla who are some names that you are keying in on for the 2024 PGA Championship I mean I'm looking at the graphic you just displayed with Brooks Kepka at 16 to 1 a guy who's won three of these things and it could not set mm. up any better for Brooks because he loves having a chip on his shoulder he loves feeling like the underdog he's the defending champion here he should be the prohibitive favorite but we're coming in the week and all we're talking about is Scotty and Rory I feel like Brooks that's got to be a ton of motivation to come out here and play well um, th my pick, my one and done pick this week, I came on this show and I told you after the Masters that I, I love Ludwig. He withdrew from last week's Wells Fargo with the knee injury. I still think his game is so perfect for this venue. I just wonder, you know, the extent of that injury. And I think he's around 20 to 1 right now. So I, 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 yeah. I just, I'm looking at Brooks and Ludwig and I love those two plays. Getting momentum heading into a major championship, sometimes we don't see all that often because typically some of those tournaments pre-major, guys are off the course getting ready and not playing in those lower-level events. Well, the PGA Tour says, you know what? Let's ramp up some signature events. You have that momentum with Rory McIlroy. And the one thing that amazes me is how talented a golfer he is but hasn't won a major championship since Valhalla in 2014. A decade has passed. Is it the week that you can look for Rory and say, now is the time he's going to seize it? Because being comfortable in a golf course knowing you've won a championship championship here already in this course has to go a long way Charlie you, you gotta love Rory this week and, and in fact there have been a ton of course comparisons made between Valhalla and Quail Hollow where he just won I mean golfers so often are, are doing their best to pull on a memory bank of you know good shots and good feelings and he doesn't have to you know think too far back just yeah. go back to last week when he lapped the field 
the interesting thing I think for Rory this week is going to be there are obviously reports yesterday about him filing for divorce on TMZ. I'm not here to mm-hmm. talk about the guy's personal life, but I do know that often pro players will talk about some of the best golf I play is in times of the greatest turmoil, turmoil off the course. Cause it's kind of like, you're just focusing, you're locking in, you're, you're working on your craft. And so I wonder if, you know, in a way, that's what's helped Rory focus and play good golf right now. And so all those things considered, it's like, man, it kind of feels like the right time for him to break the major slump here at a place he's already won and has good vibes around. It has been a decade. That's one of the many storylines for Rory McIlroy entering this week of the 2024 PGA Championship. His last major title, as that graphic displayed, here at Valhalla in 20. 20- 14. So as we go elsewhere, of course, one of the storylines anytime he is in a field, Charlie Eldrick, Tiger Woods. It's not going to be easy at a hilly golf course in the hills of Louisville, Kentucky. What is your expectation for Tiger Woods this week at the PGA Championship? Yes, Smiley and I talked about this last night in our preview show. And, you know, the, the question posed was, does he make the cut? I think he does make the cut. I think we saw enough from him at Augusta through two rounds to think that it's not an issue of of the quality of his game. The guy, the guy is, you know, still one of the best ball strikers on the planet and and probably will be for the rest of his life. It's just the, can you go through the physical grind on a four day stretch? So I think you see him make the cut. And I I just, I think the scoring starts to tail off in in round three and round four. And I really, I really think, I think this is going to be a big inflection point for Tiger this week of just taking stock of yeah. what it takes to gear up for a major and, and how many more times this can be done. I will never doubt him, but I think this is going to be after the Masters especially, it's going to be a big barometer on, on how many more of these things he does in, in this sort of way. Yeah, certainly so. We know he is comfortable at Augusta. It's the one major venue that does not change on an annual basis. But how about getting ramped up for the PGA Championship? I am a simple man, however. If you give me a plus money price on Tiger Woods to make a cut at a major, I will bet that number. Charlie, any golfers there in the final 20 seconds to display that on-course reporting voice? <laughs> I, I just saw I just saw Minwoo Lee walk by. He's wearing a nice pair of Lululemon shorts. I need to get a pair of those and no tee shots to report on. That's all I got for you boys from Valhalla. Let, listen, go. Smiley better be scared. That was pretty good, Charlie Duel. <laughs> we appreciate the time. More on the early line next. Nuggets and say, whoa, just a week ago, they were that minus 115 or so price. Now we're looking at them at a 7 to 1 price. Any chances the Nuggets can actually come back? That could be scoring six or seven games, so I think that could be a little bit of a tighter spread between those two. But when you got those two guys, those two monsters, and, and Towns and Ant Edwards, it's just really hard. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Missed call the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or, a, a, you know, a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that wasn't called or vice versa. Give me a 48-minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In-game live, prime time. We got not one, but two 
coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. Of let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. A doubleheader of NBA playoff action on this Wednesday night around the association. He's Donnie, I am Ben. We're the two premier NBA handicappers on this network. And we get you set for another night of a set of two games. Both game fives, both one seeds in either conference in action. Back on their own home floor. We start with the first game inside TD Garden. The Celtics booked as a 14 and a half point favorite with a potential series clinching victory tonight over Cleveland with a win Boston back into the Eastern Conference Finals for a third consecutive year 15 points earlier this Wednesday morning now 14 and a half in favor of the C's the over under is 206 let me ask you this in two ways the RS last time we were in Boston game two it was the Celtics losing big on their own home floor Mm -hmm. to Cleveland as a 14-point home favorite. Let's start with this. Is there any chance the Celtics lose outright tonight once again inside TD Garden? No, because if you're taking a look right now, let's just go FanDuel Sportsbook right now and say, okay, what's the points prop here for Donovan Mitchell? It's not even listed. I don't think he's going to play tonight, so I don't think they can win this game. And also, sometimes we do see this, Ben, in the previous game. Cleveland didn't win the game, but they did cover the spread. And it's one of those where you sort of can rally the troops for a game without your superstar player there. Then, as we know, Ben, like the bottom falls out sooner than later. You thought that that would get your last great effort at home, and then it's a formality. The series isn't going any longer than the next game, which means human psychology dips in a little bit. All right, we've got to travel to Boston, one more game, and you get absolutely pounded in the first half. Now, granted, it's the playoffs. It's not a regular season game in February, and these guys do have a lot of pride. But I've seen that so many times. It's like, boy, I didn't expect that performance without your key player. And then you say, oh, well, it's supposed to lose by 20 to 25 points, and they do that tonight. Yeah. That's the angle I'm looking at and what I'm actually getting from the Cleveland Cavaliers because also on top of that, Some guys that performed very well without Donovan Mitchell, we now have tape on the way that the Cleveland Cavaliers want to play without Donovan Mitchell. So a lot of things going against the Cavaliers here for me. Yeah, I completely agree. Listen, Boston wins this series in five games tonight. Now, the second part of that conversation is the cover, 14 and a half in favor of the Seas. As Donnie alluded to, the Cavaliers did not win but they did cover as a pregame 12-point dog at home in game number four, 109-102, the only time in this set. Both teams have scored 100-plus points, pushing us to an over of the shortest total that we had seen at 204 and a hook tonight at 206 for game number five in Boston. If you're trying to find a best bet in this game, Donnie, if you're trying to find some value in this fifth game where the Celtics are a 14 and a half point favorite, how do you do it? Probably going to take guards here for Cleveland and take a look at last night. Look, Garland had 40 minutes he played, 12 of 27. Ends up scoring 30 points and shot 13 three-point shots, making four of those. That's yeah. almost like a carbon copy, Ben, what you would get out of Donovan Mitchell in the starting exactly. lineup. It's like, okay, I'll play that Donovan Mitchell role. But then you take a look at the offset guys, right? You take a look at Levert, 39 minutes, 9 of 18 from the floor. These are a lot of shots that they normally wouldn't be getting because Donovan Mitchell takes those shots at this point. But also, the three-point line. Here's what the key ingredient's going to be. How do we see you need to beat the Boston Celtics if you're a 15-point dog? It's not like, let's be ultra-efficient on offense, slow the game down, and score in the low block. No, it's go out, shoot as many three-point shots as you can, and if we can shoot 40 of them and make 45%, we're going to be in this ballgame. So maybe it is the three-point shots, which have been the death of me here, quite frankly, in the playoffs, trying to match up who's going to make those. But if you are Cleveland tonight, you're not pounding the ball down low. Like, literally, Max Struess in that last game, I think he had his first five triples, ended up five of nine. He's going to have to repeat that 
performance. Garland's going to have to make more than four three-point shots. The uphill climb is going to be nasty, but I think the pathway to covering this line is shooting three-point shots for Cleveland. So for me, it's not necessarily looking at Boston from any player points perspectives or any three-point shots here because we expect good performances out of their star players, but we always get a little bit tricky. In the fourth quarter, if you don't need those superstar players to be in there, why does Tatum need to get to 30 points if he has 24 and they're already up 16 points with four minutes to play? He's not going to be in this game. So for me, Cleveland is going to play this bell-to-bell, and a lot of guys that aren't used to taking a lot of shots again will be able to take those shots. That's the way I'm approaching this, more from a prop perspective from the Cavaliers than taking a look at a side or a prop perspective from the Celtics side. Listen, the Cavs knew that the great equalizer, if they were going to pull an upset shorthanded without Spider, and by the way, that 14 and a half point spread does indicate that Donovan Mitchell is not going to play tonight and no props listed at this moment. Could change by the yeah. time we tip tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time in Boston. But the Cavs knew the great equalizer without Spida was the three-point shot. 48 attempted threes as a team 48 <laughs> yeah. of their 94 overall field goal attempts 51.1 percent of cleveland's field goals on uh monday night in game number four came from three-point range because of the volume it gives you opportunities then to look at the three-point numbers darius garland he attempted 13 only made four not overly efficient his number tonight Two and a half. Max Struess, a great mm. three-point shooter. Five of nine. His three-point prop. Two and a half. The over has some plus money. Struess was also great in terms of kind of orchestrating the offense a little bit. Seven dimes, seven boards. His assist prop tonight, three and a half. The over plus money once again. Do like that look for Max Struess. Jason Tatum on the other side had not scored 30 points in a playoff game yet for the Celtics until they took the trip to the land in game number three. Now he scored 33 in two consecutive points prop tonight for game number five, 28 and a hook. DRS, now we go to Oklahoma City. It is game number mm-hmm. five tonight between the Thunder and the Mavericks in a series tied at two games all. Plenty more in this game coming your way after the break, but OKC, four and a half point favorite tonight against Dallas. Yeah, and rightfully so. They should be the favorite. They're supposed to be their number one overall seed now in their own building. You saw them play very well in that last game to even up the series to say, hey, man, we're not going back to OKC down 3-1. Now we can go back to OKC and take a series commanding lead 3-2 once this game is done. The struggle I'm having with them so many times in the playoffs is later. Yesterday, you've actually took two overs. You won those, even though the games technically weren't all that high scoring compared to regular season games. It's always interesting to me because as you get later, every possession, as I talk about, means so much more at this point so I probably technically lean towards the under even though these are two very good offensive teams with some superstar talent that can really get after it I like the under 213 but we'll get into some player props after the break for sure yeah smallest over under of this series so far yeah. where three of the previous four games have stayed under their pregame total 213 that number as of right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook between the Thunder and the Mavs we continue to preview the game in OKC with a best bet up next Denver Nuggets and say, whoa, just a week ago, they were that minus 115 or so price. Now we're looking at them at a 7 to 1 price. Any chances the Nuggets can actually come back? That could be still six or seven games, so I think that could be a little bit of a tighter spread between those two. But when you got those two guys, those two monsters, and, and Towns and, and Edwards, it's just really hard. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Miss call the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or a, a you know a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that wasn't called or vice versa. Give me a 48 minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. 
the early the line. magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. In a series tied at two games a piece, we head to game number five tonight in Oklahoma City between the Thunder and the Mavs. Who takes this decisive game to hold that series advantage at three games to two? The Thunder booked as a four and a half point favorite inside Oklahoma City tonight with a total at 213. Donnie, earlier in the show, we talked about the best bet for the doubleheader tonight with the fade the public poll. Both you and I believe in OKC. If we do, more than likely to cover this four and a half point spread they have covered in five of their six playoff wins six of their eight playoff games have stayed under you lean under tonight with that total of 213 now let's talk some prop perspective for this game the nightcap of the doubleheader on this Wednesday what grabs your attention Oh, it's superstars grab my attention tonight. And I know it's a little cop. I like, oh, you know, use like those secondary guys. But when the games start to get ramped up, and what I mean by ramping up is second level of the playoffs here, late in the series, 2 2, where are you going to lean on? Your superstar players, not your C guy on the offense to shoot 10 three point shots to see if he can make five of those. The reason I bring that up is last night, what did you see in Madison Square Garden? Your superstar player in Brunson's like, you know what? Series is tied up. It's my time now. I'm going to shoot 35 plus yep. times. What did you see in the nightcap last night? Luka Doncic going like, I'm, or excuse me, uh, Nikola Jokic. I'm not losing this. Like, absolutely not. We're not losing this game. It's all going to go through me. So I have that sort of same vibe for tonight's action, which includes the Dallas Mavericks and OKC. It's Shea Gilgis Alexander, 31 and a half. Of course, it's going to be that level. You know, he's going to fall between 26 points and 35 points every time. He's going to have to be huge tonight and effective in order for them to get a victory. Mm. But on the same time, you take a look at Doncic, where he just came off with a triple double in a loss. You think he's going to be passive tonight? The one one guy that's always intriguing me through in this series, though, is I don't know if it's just because a really good defender is being placed on Kyrie Irving where he can't get those shots and score 25-plus yeah. points a night to sort of be that ride-or-die guy along with Luka. So I'm really focused on Luka Doncic. I think he has to be that guy. If Dort's going to take out Kyrie, and let's just say P.J. Washington is maybe not connecting on as many three-point shots as he's hit over the past couple games, it's got to be Luka for me. So that plus 330 price on a triple-double really stands out because I do believe he's going to battle this game and go, this series we have to win this game if we want to win this it's got to be on me tonight. Yeah. his usage rate is going to be through the roof Ben at least five triples for PJ Washington in yeah. the last three games for Dallas was the Mavericks leading scorer in game number four that's not necessarily a good thing and Luca did record a triple double and it's hard to say triple doubles are not great, but it was not a great triple double out of no. Luka Doncic, at least from the scoring component of it. And finishing that game just 6 of 20 from the floor. 27 and a half is the points prop for Luka Doncic tonight. 21 and a half, number four, Kyrie Irving, the lowest we have seen pregame here in the four-game set. And when you look at Luka, it's been the struggles from deep. His best performance was game number two. He was five of eight from three. In game three, another victory for Dallas. Just one of four. So not great, but didn't hoist a ton of shots. Was one of eight in game number four as Dallas was abysmal from three and not great from the free throw line either. Shea Gilgis Alexander. This is what he does. 31 and a half now is yep. the points prop. Here's his four yep. game scoring output in this series. 29 in game one, 33 in game two, 31 in game three, 34 in game four. There is never that far of a bottom for SGA when it comes to what he is going to do in the scoring department. 
That's the second game tonight. OKC, a four and a half point favorite total, 213 against the Mavericks. First game in Boston, the Celtics, a heavy favorite, laying 14 and a half, total at 206. We do not expect at this moment Donovan Mitchell to play in game five tonight for Cleveland. But now it's time for a best bet. So before we say mm. farewell and goodbye, it's bye bye bye. DRS, plenty to choose from on this Wednesday. What is your best bet? You hit my best bet yesterday, Major League Baseball, by staying with an under. We're going to go back to the RBI process tonight, and that's going to be a game between the Minnesota Twins and also the New York Yankees. Going to take a home player here. That's Max Kepler, left-handed batter, 286 ISO, with a 477 weighted on base percentage against right-handed pitching. Stroman's on the mound this year, has struggled with left-handed batters. We'll take Kepler to get an RBI at a plus 140 price right here at FanDuel. The German great Max Kepler for Minnesota today. The Twins, a home favorite. (laughs) It's good. Listen, that was very good. I expect the three ball to be firing tonight in Boston, by the way. So look at the German Max Struess, who is really from Mm -hmm. Illinois, or over his assist prop of three (laughs) and a half. I go to the WNBA. I expect a better year out of the Chicago Sky. They're an eight-and-a-half-point dog in their opener in Dallas tonight against the Wings. I think the Sky keep it within that margin. That does it for this Wednesday on the early line. He's Donnie. I'm Ben. We'll talk tomorrow on a Thursday at 8 a.m. Eastern.